All right, guys, welcome to the second half of module four. We're halfway done with the book. We're now on topic D. So our first lesson for topic D is 415. Uh, you're going to be on page 204. That's your blank page. That's where you're going to put your warm up. And we're going to use the equation every single time. We're going to use the equation y equals 3 halves x. And we're going to solve each of these equations. And we're going to plug in each of these x values into the y equals 3 halves x to figure out our corresponding y. So if y equals 3 halves x, 3 halves times 0, well, clearly that is 0. If we're going to use 1, 3 halves times 1 is 3 halves. If we're going to use x is 2, then 3 halves times 2, which is, I'm going to make 2 over 1. 3 halves times 2 over 1 is 6 over 2, which is the same thing as 3. Then I go 3 halves times 5, and I'm going to go 5 over 1. 3 halves times 5 over 1 is 15 over 2. I'm going to leave it just like that. And then my last one, 3 halves times x is now 8. I'm going to make that 8 over 1. So 3 halves times 8 over 1 is 24 over 2, which is the same thing as 12. If I plotted these points, x, y points, they would be linear. So when I connect my points, they would give me a straight line. So for your 415 warm-up, that is all you need to do. Getting into the lesson, it says the graph shows the relationship between time in seconds and volume of water in milliliters for two graduated cylinders. So we have a graph that has a red line. We have a graph that has a blue line. And it says, what is the unit rate of the proportional relationship represented by the red line? How do you know? So all I have is a red line. I don't have any points. I'm going to put in some points. And that's going to help me to, let's see, let's go black for points. Let's go right there. So there's a point right there. There's a point right there. And I always look for points that cross or go through the intersection of the grid as far as the X and the Y. I see a point right there. I see a point right there, and I see a point right there. So I'm going to make a little table. So since we're working with the red line, I'm going to make a table. And so I'm going to look at my points. My first x value, I guess my first x value would be 0, 0. So let's come back. Let's put a point at 0, 0, which I think is already there. Then we're going to go 1, 10. And then we're going to go, no, it's actually not 1, 10. It's 1, 20. It's 2, 40. It's 3, 60. It's 4, 80. And the last one is 5, 100. And then we'll go to the blue. And we'll do the exact same thing. We've got... All of these points, which are easy to figure out. I'm going to stop there. And we're going to go blue. <laughs> And so we're starting at the same spot. They both have 0, 0 in common. But when I do x is 1 for the blue, 
there's 10 for the y, and then it goes 2 and 20, and then 3 and 30, and then 4 and 40, and I'm going to stop at 5, 5 and 50. So the first thing you notice is as you look at the red table, as x increases by 1, y increases by 20. So it's going up 20, and it's going up 20 milliliters per second. Because if I look at my graph and I look at my labels for my x and y axis, volume of water in milliliters, so it's going up 20 milliliters per second. And then if I look at the blue, it's going up by 10. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So it says for letter A, what is the unit rate of the proportional relationship represented by the red line? How do you know? Well, your unit rate is what's happening over time. And I'm looking for a unit of time and the unit is seconds. So per one second. So I can see that. Let's circle this. This allows me to see my unit rate. So it is a unit rate of 20 milliliters per second. That is my unit rate, 20 milliliters per second. And then it says, how do you know? Teachers, please pardon this interruption. Ms. Howard, could you please come to the front office? Ms. Howard, to the front office. It goes up 20 milliliters per second. And then my B got cut off, but my B says now I want to do the exact same thing for the blue line. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We know that the blue line was not 20 milliliters per second. It was 10 milliliters per second. And you can see it goes up 10 milliliters per second. Unit rate is always what is the y value when x is 1. So the y value for the red is 20 when x is 1. The y value for the blue is 10 when x is 1. Unit rate means per one unit. And the one unit we're talking about is per second for this first problem. Then we go to example two. And we're going to keep working on unit rates over and over and over again. So what we're going to write is this little equation right here. This is always how you find your unit rate. You're going to go y equals kx and k is going to equal your unit rate. So if I need to find the unit rate, then that means I need to figure out what k is. So if I want to figure out what k is, I want to get rid of the x. So let's bring it right here, y equals kx. So if I want to get k, I'm going to divide both sides by x. So this little formula right here never changes. If you know what y divided by x is, then that is your unit rate. And I'll show you in the table form how this works really quick. So it says the data in the table show the relationship between time in seconds and volume of water in milliliters for every or for each graduated cylinder. So let's take our y, since I want to see the unit rate, and I already know the unit rate right here because the unit rate is when x is 1. So I already know my unit rate is 10. But let's do the math, y over x. So this is 10 over 1, which equals 10, y over x. This is 20 over 2, 20 over 2, which if you notice is still 10. This is 50 over 5 which if you notice, 50 over 5 is still 10. So it doesn't matter which y, x, x, y combo I use. y divided by x is going to give me my unit rate when I'm dealing with 
my proportional relationships. And then I come over to the cylinder B and I already know my unit rate is going to be 20 because when X is one, the Y value is my unit rate, but let's do the math. So 20 over one is 20. Then this one was 60 over three, which is still 20. This one was 100 over five, which is still 20. Every single time, all I did is I took the Y, put that on top, took the X, put it on bottom. Y divided by X will give me my unit rate. So it says, use the table to determine the rate at which each graduated cylinder fills with water. So A will be red, B will be blue. A, we can see it is 10 milliliters per second. And then blue was 20 milliliters per second. And then It says for letter B, which graduated cylinder fills with water at a faster rate? So if the blue cylinder B is filling at 20 milliliters per second and cylinder A is only filling up at 10 milliliters per second. Then it's clearly obvious that cylinder B is faster than cylinder A. So I'm going to say cylinder B. fills up 20 milliliters per second versus 10, twice as fast. As cylinder A, let's put in parentheses, 20 milliliters versus 10 milliliters twice as fast. So then we look at example three. It says for cylinders A and B, identify which equation relates the time X in seconds to the volume of water Y in the graduated cylinder in milliliters. So which cylinder is going up 20 milliliters per second? So if I go back, the one that's going up 20 milliliters per second is cylinder B. And so the other one has to be Cylinder A, that has to be going up 10 milliliters per second. And you can see cylinder A is 10 milliliters per second. That's it for three. Then we go to four. It says the equation Y equals 123X represents the time X in hours needed to produce the number of toys Y at a toy store. And that toy store is going to be called A. So we're going to call this A. And A is 123x. And so that means the unit rate is 123. So if it says, what are the unit rates for the relationship represented by the equation and the graph? Explain. Let's do this. Let's go T, S, A, toy store A is 123x. And let's actually, let's do this. Let's just put y equals 123x. This is my k. My k is 123. My k equals 123. If we go back to our equation, y equals kx. k is always going to be your unit rate. So it tells you for Toy Store A, we don't have to do any work. It tells us that they're making 123 toys per Hours, X is in hours. So this is 123 toys per hour. Now for the second toy store, toy store B. So let's use blue again. T S B, toy store B. It doesn't give us 
the equation, it gives us a graph. So if we have a graph, we can come up with a table. If we have a table, we can see what the unit rate is. We can figure out what Y divided by X is. So let's do a little table right here. Didn't work. Let's try it again. You good? X, Y. So when X is zero, Y is zero makes sense. If you spend zero hours making toys, you'll have zero toys. After one hour, I've got a 100 here, I've got a 200 here, and I've got one, two, three, four. So basically I have five sections. I have five bars in between. So we're going up by 20 each time. There's 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. So that is 120. I could stop right there because I already know this is my unit rate. They are making 120 toys per hour. But let's continue. Two is 240. And three is 360. And I know that Y divided by X will always give me my K, which is my unit rate. So I want to find my unit rate. So 120 divided by one, pretty easy, that's 120. 240 divided by two is still 120. 360 divided by three is still 120. So my unit rate is K equals 120 which means they're making 120 toys per hour. So it says, which company produces toys at a greater rate? Toy Store A was the equation. Toy Store B was the graph. Toy Store A was 123 toys per hour. Toy Store B was 120. So Toy Store... A produces, well, what's the difference between 123 and 123 more toys per hour? It's always nice when they give you the equation because when they give you the equation, all you have to do is look at the number in front of the X, and that is your unit rate. And so you have no work to do with that. And then on a graph, we can still figure out the unit rate. Number five. And now says the equation Y equals 5 6 X represents the distance Y in miles that Mrs. Banks drives in X minutes. The table represents the relationship between the time in minutes and the distance in miles that Miss Hassan drives. So we have two ladies, Mrs. Banks and Miss Hassan. So let's go B for Banks. And let's go H for Hassan. And so we're going to, I'm going to put this back up here every single time. Y equals KX. This is beautiful because Banks is Y equals 5 6 x so we know the unit rate is 5 6 we know that she is driving a certain distance in a certain amount of minutes so she is driving 5 6 of a mile per minute and then we do not know what hassan is and so we have to go y divided by X equals K because as we solve for the unit rate, we're going to get rid of the X. So we can see that Y over X equals K. So this one has two is my Y, three is my X. So K equals, let's put it down here, K equals two thirds. So there's my unit rate. I also know that for the bottom one, K equals y over x, which is 4, 6. 4, 6 is the exact same thing as 2 thirds because it just reduces. So Hassan, let's go a different color. Let's go red.
Her unit rate is 2 thirds, so y equals 2 thirds x. So we have the unit rate for each of these. So we have unit rate, so let's go k equals 5 sixths for banks, k equals 2 thirds for Hassan. Who drives at a faster speed, a greater speed? So I have to look at this is 5 sixths, this is 2 thirds, they're fractions. I can't compare them yet because they are not common denominators. So let's change two thirds to something over six where we can already see it's four over six. So which one's faster, five sixth or four sixth? Four sixth is not as fast as five sixth. So who drives at a greater speed? Mrs. Banks. Drives. faster than Miss Hassan. Because, let's go, because her unit rate was greater. And then let's put in parentheses 5 sixth is greater than 2 thirds. One more left, and then we have our exit ticket, and then we are done with 415. Example 6. Numbers get a little bit uglier, but the process is still the same. We know that I'm looking for y equals kx. I know that K equals my unit rate. I know that if I have to solve for my unit rate, then K equals Y divided by X. So keep writing that down over and over and over so that you don't forget this equation. It says the graph represents the relationship between the time in minutes and volume of water that flows from faucet A in gallons. The table represents the relationship between the time in minutes and volume of water that flows from faucet B in gallons. So assume the water flows from each faucet at constant rates. What are the unit rates for the relationship represented by the graph and the table? So I have two faucets. I have faucet A and I have faucet B. So let's go A in red. Let's go A in red. And let's go B in blue. And neither one of them gives me an equation. One gives me the graph, one gives me a table. So I need to figure out the unit rate. So for faucet A, I have points. Let's make a little table. Let's make a little table. Can I sneak it in right here? Let's make a table right here. X, Y. So my two points on my graph, I've got two and eight over seven, kind of ugly. And then I've got four and I've got 16 over seven. So to find my unit rate, I have to go Y divided by X. I don't know if anyone's easy on this. Let's go with the eight sevenths divided by two because I have to go Y divided by X. So I'm gonna go eight sevenths divided by two which is the same thing as 8 sevenths divided by 2 over 1. And then you guys love this rule. I got fractions. I got division. I got copy dot flip. So I'm going to go 8 sevenths times 1 over 2. So I've got 8 over 14. So I've got 4 over 7. So my unit rate for the red which is faucet A is 4 sevenths, so I've got Y equals 4 sevenths X. That's my equation. I'm going to sneak B down a little bit lower. Okay, then I get to do the exact same thing for faucet B. It gives me a table. I know that it's always X and Y. 
and I know that I want to figure out the unit rate. So I want to go Y over X. I'm not going to use this one because this is a repeating decimal. So I'm going to go with this one. So to find my K for this, I'm going to go five over nine. And that's pretty easy. So I know that my unit rate is Y over X. So this equation is Y equals five ninths X. So I've got Y equals four sevenths X and I've got Y equals five ninths X. Faucet A is four sevenths, faucet B is five ninths. I got to figure out which is flowing faster at a greater rate. So I got to figure out what is faster is four sevenths or five ninths greater. So I'm going to go back to, let's go to black. Let's put it over here. I've got four sevenths, four sevenths, and I've got five ninths. I want to see which one is more. As I look for common denominators, I'm looking for 63 is my first common denominator. And so seven times nine is 63. So four times nine is 36. Nine times seven is 63. So five times seven is, oh, look how close they are. One is 36 over 63. And one is 35 over 63. So the four sevenths is 36 over 63. The five ninths is 35 over 63. So which one is flowing at a greater rate? By 1 63rd. It is faucet A. So faucet A is greater by one sixty third. And what are we talking about as far as we're talking about volume of water in gallons? 1 63rd of a gallon. And we're talking about our time per minute. So they're almost identical. A difference of 1 63rd of a gallon per minute. Faucet A is greater than faucet B. Which leads us to our last piece, the exit ticket. It says the equation y equals 0.5x represents the volume of water y that flows from faucet A. We keep going back to faucets. So here's faucet A and here's faucet B. And so A gives us an equation, and the equation is Y equals 0.5X. So I know that K equals 0.5. So I know that the unit rate is equal to 0.5. What are we talking about? We're talking about gallons. Per, look at the x-axis, minute. Okay, the equation's our best friend. Now we go to letter B. It does not give us anything but a graph. So I'm going to take my, since I'm doing B in blue, it's like make a little xy table. And I see my first point's at 0, 0. I see that my second point is at 5, 2. I see that my third point is at 10, 4. And then I've got 15, 6, and you should be able to see the pattern going up by 5 on the x's, going up by 2's on the y's. So I got 20 and 8. I can take any one of those to figure out my unit rate. Remember that K equals Y divided by X. So I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take the first one, two over five. So K equals two over five. 
So if I go 2 divided by 5, that is a decimal. That is 0 0.4. And so since the unit rate is 0 0.4, I am doing 0 0.4 gallons per minute. So it says, if you graphed both relationships, which line would be steeper and explain? So let's do a little red. So every minute is 0 0.5. So every minute is 0 0.5. So let's go, let's do 10 minutes. If every minute is 0 0.5, 10 minutes would be, instead of 4, it would be 5. 5 minutes instead of 2 would be 2.5. 15 minutes is if every minute is half a gallon, half of 15 is 7.5. And then the last one we'll do is, let's do 20. If it's a half a gallon per minute, 20 would be 10. So if I draw my line, let's go a little bit thinner. If I put them both on the same graph, you can see that red, which is faucet A, would be steeper than the original line, which is black, which was faucet B. So. Faucet A would be steeper. Because 0 0.5 gallons per minute. is more than 0 0.4 gallons per minute. So if your unit rate is bigger, then your line would be steeper. So that is it. That is the first section of the second half of Module 4. You will have homework on this tonight, and then I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.